started off muted. Welcome, everybody, to another sad, depressing edition of I'll Hang Up and Listen. And Sabres lose to the Columbus Blue Jackets 4-3. to three. Uh, What else is new? You know, uh, blow a two-goal lead in the third period. What else is new? Um, nothing. I mean, f- sure, there's positives to talk about, but, like, this is just like Groundhog Day. Like, why can't this team protect leads in the third period? It just it's just it's just it's just mind blowing. I know we, we you'll I talk about with Cully all the time. If this team can just get replacement level goaltending, they're easily a 500 hockey team. But we can't get that. We can't. I'm not trying to put this all on Tarski there, even though I think he should have that save in overtime. Even though Darlene owns it, he says he got caught flat, didn't control his gap, and you know should have blocked that shot. At the end of the day, you need your goaltender to make a save there 16 seconds into overtime. Like, I don't even understand why Craig Anderson isn't starting tonight. I, I don't know. Was there some news I missed? The guy had a week and a half, over almost a week off. Like, why is he not starting this game against Columbus? And it's not a back-to-back. They don't play again until, the, until Saturday. So why not come out with Craig Anderson? Makes zero sense to me. Like, I'm just, I'm just so, like, it's so just – infuriating guys it's so infuriating that like we're st- it's a- protect the lead jesus christ protect a lead get it in the garage you're a national hockey league team get this in the garage for fuck's sake my god it is so like ugh. Like I, I I sat there and watched that game and I like opt I try to be optimistic. First period was kind of flat. Second period looked great. Um, you know, goals from uh you know, goal to to take the lead uh, from Ocposo off a nice pass from Jankowski. And then you start the per- third period off hot, right out of the gate. Beautiful passing play between Skinner and Tuck. Tuck who's an absolute heater since coming to Buffalo and beginning his career after coming back from that shoulder injury, just, just absolutely on fire. It is everything you want in a player who's who honestly should any, any other player in the league would have been furious with that trade coming to Buffalo, going from that team to this team would have been absolutely furious. This guy had a, had a joker, a smile on it. It's like, he's ecstatic to be here, but then just absolutely performing at next level beyond any of our expectations and we can't win a fucking game like oh it's just just get me replacement level goaltending that's where you start this off with you know we got a couple comments here how many leads can you blow in one season until you say enough is enough you had a long break from the all-star game anderson should have been the starter and not takarski where is kim i 100 percent agree i i said it in the pregame, why is Craig Anderson not playing tonight? That makes zero sense. That's on Granado. If I'm any, that's on Granado. Why would you not come out of a, 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 out of the All Star break where everyone's had plenty of rest? Unless again, there's something we don't know, some type of reasoning we don't know. I didn't hear. I didn't hear his post game. Why is Craig Anderson not starting? And how about the fact that we need to rely on a 40 year old goaltender? Like to to be the difference between winning and losing hockey games. Like, why are we here? Like, how did we get here? Just give me like replacement level, not even average level NHL goaltending. Just NHL goaltending every single night. And this is easily a 500 hockey team, even with all their downfalls and all the uh, like all the mistakes throughout the season. Like, this is a 500 hockey team, and it's so so infuriating. Like just the lack of care, like care from, you know, it's just, it's just a few more uh, comments here. Is anyone else against trading uh, Vic- Victor Olofsson for a damn puck? Like another guy who just doesn't show up ever. He's supposed to be a goal scorer. He's nowhere to be found. It's not like he's not being in positions, being put in the pos- positions to score. Just get him off this hockey team. Fire this entire team in a sun. For fuck's sake, it's up for like five or six players. The obvious guys, your Tuck, your Krebs, uh, the, the guys that played tonight, your Tuck, your Krebs, your Cousins, uh, Darlene. I, I'm done with Joker, by the way. I am so done with him. He had a shift in the first period, maybe what a puke. Guy goes behind the net, gets absolutely dummy behind the net, loses the puck, and then gets 
uh, after the rush going going the other way, gets the puck in the blue line, just shoots the puck right in the shin pads, giving the puck away. It's just like the guy has no fucking awareness. Like, yeah, him and him and uh, him and Darlene ha- have had some magic in the past, but the guy just it, he's he in it, he in it. We we want to criticize Darlene so much. How about him? Because he's just as, if not worse, and he doesn't even have and he doesn't have the offensive upside that Darlene has. The the high ceiling that Darlene has offensively, he doesn't have it. He's been garbage, garbage for most of the season. And but no, absolutely not. We're not even talking about that. Austin. Sorry, we're not moving Darlene to wing. No, like I, I just refuse to have that conversation. Sorry, sorry, Austin, not having that conversation. <laughs> but I just I'm just so sick of it. So sick of it. And let's not even talk. We want to have another conversation. As mentioned before, this is RJ's final season, a year that should be celebrated. Why is this or why is this organization not doing everything they can? Obviously, you know the product on the ice isn't going to be great. Why are you not doing everything you can to put a winning team on the fucking ice? Like, not not when we I'm sorry, put put an entertain like, like the, the in-game presentation, everything around the game. Make it entertaining. Get people through the door. And you don't even attempt it. You don't. It, 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 it's so it's so infuriating. A guy who has given his life and his livelihood to this organization in his final season. And you're lucky if you have 5,000 people in the arena. This is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Be ashamed of themselves. Andrew Peters tweeted earlier, the Sabres just play the rest of their games at Harbor Star. So, like, so it looks like it's full in there. And honestly, yeah, yeah, because this is a joke. This is a joke. This is embarrassing. Ten years ago, the fans would like we would make those the walls sweat in that arena, make it sweat when we would get so loud. The walls would. Sh- I've said it so. The walls would absolutely shake with how loud it could be in that arena, how exciting and the energy, and you could you could literally hear a pin drop in that arena. Like it's it, it's embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing to watch that on TV to see all the empty seats after the All Star break. You know where we should be craving Sabers hockey, and you can't even put five thousand people, five six thousand people in that arena. That's embarrassing. I don't care what the weather's like outside. You know, eight to ten years ago, that wouldn't have flown. Like people would have been there. It wouldn't have mattered. This is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. You know. We're on the level of like Arizona Coyote attendance. And this is Buffalo, a great hockey market, one of the best in North America. And we can't even get five to six thousand people into that arena after not playing for almost a week. This is a joke. An absolute joke. Like I just I just can't handle it anymore, man. I can't. It, it's disgusting. Like I, I I sat there watching this game, and every time it panned and you got a good look at at, at, at the surrounding seats, and I, I sat there, I was like, God, man, like in tonight's post game, I'm just going to lose it, man. I'm just going to lose it because I just can't handle watching this anymore and how embarrassing this is. Like, like it, it's so bad when you have trouble competing with teams like the Arizona Coyotes and the Florida Panthers. The Florida Panthers who have a great hockey team one of the best in the league, and they can't get te- fans in, their, in the seats there. And they have one of the best teams in the league. Meanwhile, like, it's just, like, 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 it's sad, man. It's so sad that we just can't compete with, I don't know, I just, I, I, I have a lot of answers, man. Like, just like, just do what you have to do to at least make the games entertaining to be at if the product on the ice itself isn't going to be good. Promotions. Like, make sure the arena doesn't smell like a fart. Like, just the food, the, like, promotions on the on, on the concessions, you know, at the Sabre store, you know, give it, like, whatever you got to do. Not you have to do it every night, but for fuck's sakes, man, this is sad to watch. I am terrified for when Jack Eichel and, company come in to uh, come in from Vegas. It's an ESPN plus game. And I I am terrified to what that team is going to do to us. And not to mention what it's going to look like on national TV in a game where honestly, we should be pro- like, we should, we should show up in droves 
not to like thank Jack, but like to defend the trade and to defend this team and just to, to you know, to be proud of this team. And I, it, I, I, I'm, it's, it's going to be half empty. It's going to be half empty. And Jack's going to go out there and he's going to have a phenomenal game. You know, it's going to happen. And listen, I have no problem with the Jack Eagle trade. I love the return we got. Alex Tuck has been a dream. Peyton Krebs has looked great so far. And we don't know what's to come of the first, uh, the first and second round picks. So like, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. But Oh man, just just get people in this arena. Just do whatever you got to. If you can't, just sell the team already. Just sell the team. You know, I I start I I it started right here during one of these videos last year. Hashtag Where's Kim, and it kind of caught fire. But like, honest to God, where the fuck is she? Like, where is she during all this? Like, how do you watch that on TV and see that type of attendance and just not give a shit? How can you watch that? Any owner like of, of a professional hockey franchise sees that type of attendance on TV in our in our market. How are you not want, ripping your hair out of your head? Like, what do I got to do to get people in the arena for this season to say goodbye to Rick Janaret, a guy who has given his life for this organization, for these fans, for this city, has given us so many great memories and so many great goal calls. And it just, you know, it's so hard to think of Sabres hockey and not think about Rick Janaret. Thinking if you watch this team for at least five years to not remember an amazing call from Rick Janaret, whether it was a goal or a hit or so, or a save, whether it was Ryan Miller or Dominic Hasek, whomever it might have been, just like just all the, like all the calls that he, that guy has had over the years, like. I have zero faith that they're even going to get this this banner raising retirement thing done right after seeing how they botched Dominic Hasek years ago, like it was like most awkward. And I was there in attendance; it was awkward to watch. You didn't have any of his former teammates in attendance. His family wasn't fit, wasn't there. Like, like it's just like it was awkward. It was awkward to watch, and anyone who was there would agree it was terrible. And I'm just supposed to be expecting that this same ownership who gave me that is going to do right by Rick Janaret? Absolutely not. I have zero faith in that. Zero faith. What are you going to do? Hand out some RJ banners and think you did a good enough job? No. No. This, this, they don't care. She doesn't care. And where the hell is she during all this? Like the woman who, who, who believes that she, she's qualified to do this job. Who, like, I'm sorry, man. Like, just sell the team. I mean, I mean you, 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 you use COVID as an excuse to fire people. You know, fire people during a pandemic. You, you, you know, you've been liquidating your assets. Just sell the team already. Just sell them to somebody who's going to put a winning product on the ice and a winning product off the ice to make people who come into that arena feel proud to be there. Win or lose, they had a good time. Because it hasn't been a good time, uh, like, on or off the ice in fucking years. Years. You do the bare minimum. You take us for granted because it's Buffalo and we love hockey. And we uh, and you, you see the TV ratings say, well, this city loves hockey. So why should we invest money into making them feel like they matter at the game? It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. So, I, I, I'm sorry. It's getting late. I have a neighbor upstairs. I don't want to keep yelling. But let's just go over real quick the uh, the box score. But who even gives a shit? Uh, goals tonight coming from Buffalo. Uh, Dolly opening the, opening the scoring. It was a nice goal. Threw the puck to the net. It went off something in front. Popped up over Elvis Mers Lincolns and into the net. Uh, other goal, Kyle Lock post off a great pass from uh, Jankowski behind the net and buried a top shelf. Cool. Whoop did he do? And then Alex Tuck, probably the highlight of the night, off a nice give and go pass uh, from uh, Jeff Skinner. Uh, absolutely, again, a guy who's been on it uh, on fire all season, getting his sixth goal of the year. Um, trying to see here. I know he's more than a point of game player right now for Buffalo. Yeah. Well, no, actually, yeah. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, 14 points and 14 games. Um, guy's been absolutely on fire for Buffalo. Uh, a few more comments here. Uh, how did 
How do you like Rob Ray bringing up the coin toss? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, I mean, it, to an extent, he's not wrong because possession means everything in three on three hockey. It really does. Like, if you can main, like, and it's only five minutes too. So, winning that opening phase off is absolutely crucial. And teams have lear- learned how to, uh, you know, somehow make three on three hockey boring, uh, you know, d- when it comes to defending and keeping possession. So, uh, you can see teams pass it back to their goaltender sometimes to keep possession. So you don't see the give and go hockey as much as you'd like to in three on three, but yeah, that was a funny, funny comment. Um, yeah. And then, uh, he's a beast. That was an unreal, you know, another, another, uh, another, another comment here after the Corey Miller, the coin toss comment, uh, you know, he's a beast. That was an unreal goal to see live tonight in the ability. Yeah, I agree. The tuck goal was awesome. Um, couldn't agree more, you know, definitely the highlight of the night. And then also from Austin rink was bumping tonight too, for a Thursday. <laughs> I don't know how much of that I could agree with, but, uh, I, uh, I, I, I just, I, I see the attendance there, man. And it's so sad. Uh, just 16 seconds in overtime gotta be a new record. Eakin is your best face off guy and he should have at least been taking the face off. So we can get possession and start overtime. Granado is running out of time, and just like you, Dwayne, I'm losing my com- composure. Oh, Dwayne, it, you know that is a Granado thing. Like, like you, you, you essentially put, you've put Eakin out there to take that face off because that is like the biggest thing he contributes to this team. There's no denying it. It is his ability to win a face off, and he's not taking that draw. How many times we've we seen him, you know, in, in situations like that where he takes a draw and he immediately gets off the ice after winning it, like. I don't know. That that's a Granado thing. And again, Granado, you know, patience is starting to wear thin. Like you, you how many how many times can you give up, you know, two, three goal leads in the third period and expect to keep your job? I'm not gonna start the campaign to fire Granado, but like that's a coaching thing. Like you gotta be able to keep this team's composure. Granted, the game time goal was off a terrible call on Kyle Akpo. So that it was a bad call. It was a bad call. We like it out, but you still got to kill the penalty and you couldn't, you couldn't. And it's not like you're playing the Tampa Bay lightning out there or the Florida Panthers, you know, it, it, you're playing Columbus, who is a team that struggles this year too, you know, and I, I just, you, you gotta, you gotta be able to get these games in the garage when you're holding a two goal lead, especially when you start the third period off with such a nice goal by tuck, you have the energy, you know, it's just, it, it's disgusting. You, 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 you got to tighten that up, you know, you were given this job. Honestly, Granado probably doesn't have a job coaching as a head coach in the NHL if it's not for the Buffalo Sabres. Even if they decide not to hire him, he's still not a head coach. Um, you know, I, I've liked some of the things he's done. Um, he's gotten a lot out of individual development from certain players, like guys like Casey Middlestat, Tage Thompson. Rasmus Dahlin has gotten better compared to years past, you know, when Ralph Kruger essentially neutered him. So, like you've seen great things come out of Granado as a as a, in terms of development and individual players, but like you got to win these games. You have to. You got to win these games. You can't continuously keep giving up two goal leads in the third period. That is inexcusable. That does not fly. I'm sorry, it doesn't fly. So, another comment here from Corey Miller: Hack, they're competing with the Bandits for attendance. They are. They really are. That's uh. That that is a fact. They are competing with the Buffalo Bandits, the pro lacrosse team in your Buffalo for attendance. And honest to God, the Bandits have much more of an electric atmosphere, you know, win or lose than the Buffalo Sabres do. Because they, you know, it's an ex- the indoor lacrosse, it, it is an exciting game to watch. But like so much like honest to God, a Bandits game beats Buffalo's attendance tonight. Hundred percent. Absolutely beats be, beats their attendance tonight. That's how bad it looked on TV. Like, and I'm sick and tired of that look for this team. It is so bad. So bad. So all I ask, all I ask, all I ask from you, Kim, all I ask, Terry, figure this out. Figure this out. Get people through the door. Get them through the door. Do whatever you got to do, you bunch of billionaires. Dig another well. Do whatever you got to do because this is supposed to be for RJ. 
This season is supposed to be for RJ. And we knew going in that this wasn't going to be a winning season. That you're, it's just going to be about giving the youth a chance to perform, to give the youth a chance to play and develop these, these younger players. Where are you during all this? I look at this arena and it is ranks near the bottom, if not at the very bottom, just like we've been in the standings for, you know, nearly a decade. Ranks near the bottom in terms of the rest of the league. I mean, you're competing you're competing with teams with teams like Florida and Arizona in attendance in this market. That is sad. Figure it out, Kim. Figure it out, Terry. Show face. I'm not asking you to, you know, have a press conference, but make make it known that you're upset as as upset as we are with how things are going, not just on the ice, but around it. Like, do whatever you got to start doing to get people into this arena for RJ. Whatever you have to do, because this is pathetic, absolutely pathetic. And I, I just don't, I don't know how much longer I can deal with this type of an embarrassment. <laughs> I returned a beer two times tonight because it was straight water. <laughs> More comments. Of course, we lose that fast in OT. Pagulas are just like, just, you know, nowhere to be found. Uh, yeah. Where are you? Okay. Figure it out. Get people in the arena. Do this for RJ in his final year. Sh- show us. Give us some faith that you're going to be able to figure this out on, uh, I think it's an April 1st. I want to say it's April 1st for his banner raising. Because I have zero faith in any of you that you'll get this done and do it right by RJ. Figure it out. I'll hang up and listen. Good night.